I'm George, welcome to G-Mix, and this is... Lightsabers. We're making lightsabers in Blender, we're just doing it. Uh, this is, uh, using geometry nodes, so that's cool. Um, I really like it. It's, uh, a nice method I found. Uh, you get a lot of control. Um, if you don't have After Effects, this is a great substitute for the Sabers plugin from, uh... God, what's, uh, the, the, the great, the great people. Uh, I'll put them on screen. I can't remember their names right now. Uh, but um, they are great. Uh, but I also like this even more than that, even though you don't have like the cross thing with like Premiere or whatever. Um, but uh, you look a little more control. I like how it looks. You actually get some realistic motion blur, which makes it look like it's an actual thing you're holding as opposed to just like a big white swatch of Photoshop paint on there. Uh, but also it gets you... Uh, still looking like you're holding a really hot laser sword as opposed to like a glowing LED stick. Um, so it's a nice mix of the worlds. So there's a lot of customization. You can add a lot of stuff to this. You're of course in Blender, so you can make use of like the physics and everything past just a lightsaber. Uh, but anyway, I have a default Blender scene. We're going to delete that uh, light and I'm going to pull up a new a new Geometry Nodes workspace. Because like I said, this is Geometry Node lightsabers. Um, all fun and games with the Geometry Node lightsabers. Uh, so we're going to go to... Uh, ba ba ba, Geometry Note Editor, new, I'll name this like Saber. Uh, and now, we're gonna get rid of this default cube. Uh, cause we're gonna switch it, we're gonna change it, we're gonna transform it, uh, metamorphosize it into a line, a curve, uh, curve line. Right there, boom, we got a curve line, I'll make this even like two, just for scale. There we go, curve line, we did it, lightsaber, it's a stick. No, it's not. Uh, we actually want a cylinder using the curve line, so we're going to do the uh, curve to mesh. Pretty classic curve to mesh. And now we actually want this to have some body, we want it to be a mesh. So this profile curve, we will do a curve circle. And there we go. We could mess with the radius down here. Uh, but instead, we're going to, first of all, fill caps. Uh, second of all, we actually don't really need to fill caps because what we're going to do with this cylinder. But, you know, posterity's sake. Um, we're going to add a uh, set curve radius. Now we got a really thin stick. Um, and now, I mean, we could do this, but if we just keep it like a cylinder like this, it's basically the same as taking that, uh, like taking a plane and putting an emission texture on it and kind of tracing over uh, your footage, um, which is kind of what the After Effects plugin does. Um, and like you could tr just track with this tube and then you get the motion blur, but you know, it's got a flat top. Lightsabers, they're pointy. Um, at least the lightsabers I like are pointy or at least rounded on the end. So they're like a sword. They got a point. Um, so, uh, we're going to make that and give you a little control over what it looks like. Um, so we're going to do that by using math, um, and geometry nodes, which I guess are technically all math. Um, but for this radius, if we do a spline parameter, spline parameter, switch this to length, we get a cone, not quite what we want. First of all, also it's upside down, so we need a reverse curve. A uh, reverse curve. Um, we'll put that right there. Now we got a cone, kind of what we want, but we want kind of like a cylinder with a cone on top. And um, the reason we're not like instancing something is because as we move this around eventually, that instance will kind of more or less stay point in one direction because like we're not moving the geometry, moving the geometry nodes, and it's like different, so it's not the same. Anyway, this is easier, trust me. Um, so we have a spline parameter. Uh, using the length, and now we got our wonderful little cone. Uh, if we wanted to scale this, we could grab a math node uh, and change this to like multiply or divide. Uh, and now you can scale it, but you're just scaling the cone. That's not really want what we want. What we want, we want a cylinder with a cone on top. So we're going to use a minimum. And now it doesn't really look like much. We're still just scaling the cone, and that's because we got to resample this curve. So. You can do it before or after this reverse curve. Doesn't really matter right now or kind of in general. I'll do it after um, just so I kind of get the order of operations here. We resample that curve uh, and look at Look what it did. It made us a cylinder with some pointy stuff on top. We can change this value to two to fix uh, the thickness of this. Um, and now you have a choice here as the person making this lightsaber to uh, stick with uh, the count. Um, and I even like, like to up this pretty high 20 or higher usually uh, up this count so basically how many times this this line is divided but of course it's saying as it gets divided more 
it's the same number of divisions. It's just now longer, so there's wider gaps between them. Or you can use a uh, length, which will say divide this line into this length of this this many segments, and then when you add when it gets longer, keep adding segments of that length when you can. Um, so it's a little more stable. You can see as we get longer, that point stays consistent. Um, the only thing possibly for using the count is you do get a little like foreshortening as you go down and wide, but we're going to eventually be able to scale this on both ends, both the top and the bottom. So that's not really necessary. The I'm going to stick to length of 0.1. The default's pretty good for me. Um, but you can see as I go uh, bigger, um, that point gets more like sharp, which actually is a pretty good look. So maybe I'll actually keep that to like 0.2 or 0.3 rather. Um, Cause I actually kind of like a sharper point on my lightsaber. Um, but there we go. So we got it pretty darn good. That's what I think. Of course, this bottom value now, this minimum is changing like the, the width of it. I want, let's say that. So like, yeah, we got a pretty nice lightsaber, pretty nice lightsaber. But we want to move it around. We want to track this lightsaber into our footage eventually. Um, so um, we want to be able to do that. So how are we going to do that? Well, we have this as a curved line and not a cylinder or something for a reason. Um, cause you could take like a cylinder or a cone and then like shoot down the bottom face of it to get a very similar shape. Um, but we want to grab a couple empties. So we'll do empty plane axis. We'll just duplicate that, move it up on the Z. Uh, we'll name this one at the top. We'll name it top Name one on the bottom. We'll name that bottom. There we go. Pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, I'll just select both of those. I'll make a new collection and that's named like empties. Uh, just because I don't want to render them. It doesn't really render them anyway because they're empties, but you know, just from my mind. And that's why I can turn them off, both off really quickly. Just having them in a, uh, a nice little uh, collection. That's what they're called because they folder. It's a collection. Um, also, when we do get to uh, rendering this out and uh, whatever, we, we might use view layers um, just for peace of mind, make things a little easier. Um, and this will help kind of separate where those are in conjunction with everything. Um, anyway. Uh, we have our lightsaber body and we have these, but if we move these empties, let's say I go on here and I go to view as I might do if I'm going to like track this onto something so I can move this around and like just match it to my footage. But look it, it's not moving. It's not connected. So back in geometry nodes, we are going to grab a uh, object info, object info, select, let's start with our top and we're actually going to put our top onto the end. Little backwards, uh, but and then we're going to duplicate that, switch this to our bottom, uh, and put the location again onto the start. So now, when we move our top, the top moves, and we move our bottom, the bottom moves. Look at that! And because we have that set to length as we stretch it, that point doesn't get any weirder. Um, uh, and now you can see also as we move this around without rotate, we don't have to rotate uh, this empty because. Uh, it's all in con it's it's a line, so it's always going to follow, and it's always going to be pointed in that direction. So we don't have to worry about rotating at all. Like if we rotate, nothing happens. Um, so that's really nice. That's kind of one step automatically. That's already done for us. But we still want to be able to scale it. You see, if I scale this right now, nothing happens. But like that's this is all a good setup if your lightsaber stays mostly on one plane. But what if I want to point it? What if I want to be like Mace Windu and go wah, um, and be like uh. You are under arrest, yada, yada, yada. And then Anakin chops your hands off um, or hand off. Uh, but what if I want to like point at the camera or someone uh, or like it just it, I want it to be foreshortened. I want the top to be bigger than the bottom because that's what happens in real life. That's when I'm holding my stick and pointing it and like waving it around. That's how it's going to look. What I want to do is go back to your geometry notes always uh, and do some more math. We love math. Um, so I'm going to duplicate this math node, shift D, uh, and switch it to multiply add. Um, so what this is going to do is the multiply, it, was it does what we saw before. It changes the bottom radius and makes it bigger and smaller. The add changes the scale or the append in this instance, changes the scale of the whole thing. It just keeps adding consistently across the whole board, except at the point where everything is like minimum. It doesn't add from there. So that's really useful for us. And that gave us two distinct things. One controls the bottom and one controls the whole thing. So we want to take this top scale into append. 
the bottom scale into multiply, multiplier. And now if we add this up, we can see stuff happened. Uh, but that adds everything, and then this bottom one multiplies. It's You can't quite tell right now because we still have to do a little like finessing. Um, first things first, we actually want to do this over the length of the whole thing. So we want to grab this length parameter and apply that to that top value. And there we go. You can see now this bottom one controls this scale of just the bottom, but this one controls, well, it would control the overall value, but it's already like maxed out. So instead, what we want to do is fix that as well. So Shift D, multiply, add, and we're going to change this to a subtract. Shift D that onto both of our top and bottom going into this multiply add. Uh, I'm going to make this volume, the subtract usually about one, and this other one to usually 0 0.9, 1 1.1, but nah, we'll do 0 0.9. And now you see this should work out where I go scale. I can scale the bottom. And now this scales the whole thing. And then I can just go back. And I can scale that bottom again. And now we could get like a lightsaber that's really foreshortened. I mean, look at that thing. Um, but that's that's how we can use it. And then I can go ahead and I can scale that back down. It's a little finessing. So then I have to maybe scale that back up. And then this is going to scale wide. So if you are like when we get eventually to tracking this, uh, and what actually is going to be part two of this series of tracking in our uh, this lightsaber and door footage, we want to usually start with the top, match that, and then match the bottom. Um, but uh, you can see it's just wonderful times. And let's see what happens when I go to count. Um, maybe I do like count a little bit more. Eh, you know, the spline count, it's up to your preference. I'm going to stick with length, um, just to get a little more of that foreshortening. Um, but there we go. I'm saying kind of for, I've said foreshortening a lot in this tutorial. Uh, it's a fun word. Um, doesn't have anything to do with Star Wars, but it's a fun word. I'm going to reset these both to, uh, default scale, which is one. So we got a lightsaber, pretty much. Uh, but let's add just like in this end of this tutorial. We, so you have a lightsaber now. Go ahead, go forth, put it in your footage, make these. Um, but we want to add a little bit more, a little more of that lightsaber ness, like. Um, so we're going to do that first by adding a texture. I'm just going to quickly add a set material node here. Set material. Excuse me. <laughs> That was a space sneeze, a sniz, Star Wars. Um, set material, material, that's just the default blender one. I'll go to uh, our shader editor and make this uh, material, we'll name it Saber. Uh, we're just gonna delete this principal BSDF. We're going to insert an emission texture, plug that in, and this will, when I go to material preview mode, you see now we have our emission texture, bump it up to 15. Uh, but I ain't Ahsoka Tano, my lightsaber is not white. I like green, so I'm gonna make this green. Um, but that's very saturated, and also it's not glowing. It's not glowing because we have to go to our render settings. I'm an EV. I'm gonna stick an EV. Um, I'm gonna hit bloom. There we go. I got a glowing green stick, but it looks like a glow stick, and I want it to look like a lightsaber. So I'm actually going to desaturate this, this core a little bit. I usually like 0.9 under between 0.9 and 0.95. Um, just to get a hint of that green, because if you go too white, then you start to lose the glow. Um, so I like to keep a hint of like the core color in the core, um, but then really get that glow around. And uh, but the glow will be the color. But the reason why, um, because you can see this will work for kind of all the textures. If I just go on the hue, like look at there, you can tell it's the color, but as opposed to being like fully saturated. It doesn't just look like a stick. Like that's the thing that happens with like my pet peeve with the like Obi Wan show, is especially Obi Wan's lightsaber, especially since it was in the dark a lot. Um, really looked like just like the LED stick glowing, uh, and that really took away because like the core of lightsabers from the beginning has always been this bright kind of white, even if it's tinted, because it's hot plasma. It's 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 fire. It's really hot. So it should at least be very bright, brighter than the rest of the thing. Kind of especially on film. It should really be blowing out the lens um, like a bright like a bright light would do on film. So like the sun would do on film. So uh, unless you like ex uh, exposed for that, but then everything else should be whatever camera stuff. Um, but so I like this. I keep it slightly uh, desaturated, but pretty bright. The same color. We got a nice lightsaber, but it, it's kind of still 
One thing I really love about like the new Hope lightsabers, at least in the original version, I don't know if they changed it for any of the updated ones, um, but also like the, but then also the new trilogy lightsabers and most of the TV ones is that they kind of crackle, they flicker. You can do that with the, the shading. You can make the emission texture flicker, which I recommend, but also you can, uh, using, using the uh, noise modifier when you animate it, whatever. Uh, we'll get into that when we comp in. But uh, getting the uh, the little bzzz, the little, like flickers, like it's power, like it's fire again, like it's plasma, it's coming out, and like especially like if you want a broken lightsaber, like Kylo Ren's with a cracked kyber crystal, um, you really want a lot of that 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 that. Zzz. So let's add some of that zzz, um, by taking uh, our curve to mesh after our curve to mesh. So we have our lightsaber. We're going to then extrude mesh. It's gonna get real funky for a moment. We want this to be not individual. And now this will be our scale, but we wanna extrude these faces in a kind of a random order. So we're gonna choose a uh, noise texture. Uh, noise texture, noise texture. There we go. Uh, and then we want to keep this more or less where it's supposed to be. So vector math, subtract uh, 0.5. There we go. Uh, and then we also want this to, if if you've already like moved your lightsaber around and have it animated, you'll see this texture moving, but that's just because of how like the, the texture coordinates work and everything. Um, but we want to switch this to 4D because we want this value, which is our seed value. And then if we go insert a scene time frame and then press play, bam, we got a, got a little lightsaber. Um, but it looks a little, not, not quite like a lightsaber. So we want to really up this scale right here. I like to get somewhere in the hundreds. We can also add another vector math, not a subtract though. We want to add a scale and this will help us if you really easily change like the size of your core. Um, so you don't have to like rescale everything. Um, if you want like a thinner core, or a thicker core, it's not quite covering your blade or you know, you're going to comp out your whole blade or whatever. Um, and then I also like a little bit of roughness. You can really up that detail will really help too. And I like adding a little bit of distortion. If the more broken the lightsaber, the more distortion. But I like even on like a, a whole one, adding a little bit of that distortion. Adds a little more randomness. Um, but I want a little more detail in this, so I'm actually gonna add a subdivide mesh right here. Uh, usually like one level or two levels will get you pretty good. Uh, I'm gonna stick with one, but I am gonna up my scale down here still a little bit, maybe some more detail. And there we go, we got that little bit. It's a little unstable, maybe I do actually want that to go. And there we go. Uh, we got, I can add a little more detail on that. We got a lightsaber. Uh, and I maybe want the cores a little thick. So we go, maybe that was not quite right. So like 0.95, uh, but there we go. We got a lightsaber, woo, woo, woo. Um, and now, uh, yeah, that's it. That's, that's the basis of how to make this geometry nodes lightsaber. So it's one that uh, we can get this little like crackling bits. Uh, we can, again, move it around. Uh, it might get a little funky, so you might have to, as you move it, you might like, that doesn't work. Let me go back in here. Let me change that scale back to one. All right, still not quite. Let me change this texture. Ah, it was the scale of the texture. Good to know. So like that is a little bit of funkiness with how this works since it's all like kind of math based and coordinate based. Uh, lightsabers, they're not a, they're, they're fantasy, not a science. Anyway, uh, lightsabers, we can move them around. We can scale them again, scaling the top will scale the whole lightsaber, but then we can easily scale the bottom and we can get that point. Like it's looking right at the camera. Uh, that is that, that is that. Um, this has been my lightsaber tutorial, uh, part one. Let me remind you part one. Let me reset these back to the factory default. Um, the droid factory default app. Um, that's been part one of uh, how to make lightsabers in Blender. Uh, part two is going to cover the comping of these into a some footage um, and then how to export them if you don't want to keep them in Blender, if you want to export them uh, to use in a different software so you can kind of mess around with them some more. Are we also going to add a little more finicky bits to uh, give that little more detail, especially if you want that kind of crackly broken lightsaber like a Kylo Ren or just want to make something that's not like a standard Star Wars lightsaber, but kind of your own thing. Um, we're going to get into that as well. A little details you can add and stuff. So, uh, yeah, that will be in the part two of this video. Uh, and with that said and done, I'll, uh, hope you learned how to make lightsabers from this tutorial. Hope you make something cool with it. Um, subscribe if you like this tutorial and to catch part two when that comes out pretty darn soon. Uh, leave a comment if you have any questions. 
uh, have suggestions, things you'd like to see. Um, and I'll uh, catch you next time. Peace.